Hello and welcome to the first semi-final match of the Scrunchable Cadaver Scrub League Tournament. I'm one of your hosts, Ant-Man, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Mohan. Very sober this time. As, <laughs> as, as, as in, I've only had two beers. <laughs> I know, I've only had one can of John Smith's, which I, I really didn't enjoy either. It was in my cupboard. I don't know where it came from. I still drank it. Is that the but, last um, one on the house? That was it. I've already had yeah half a glass of Coke as well to wash it down with, but I don't know. My buzz will be quickly um, evaporated as soon as I see either Mr. Kane or Tilt take this match. It's um, really hotting up because both players have already shown their um, finesse in either holding down the A button or um, <laughs> the I don't Z know what's Kane. Yeah, or Z button. I was gonna say Z what's Kane already shown us. He's, yeah, he hasn't really had to resort to very much, I think, so far. Mm. He has been building lots of Zerglings and drones. The occasional Baneling, but uh, and the occasional Muta, but really not a great deal. Uh, I'm hoping we see him really stretched today. I think it's that's a chance it, we will. Think, yeah, that's it. I mean, um, as you say, yeah, he hasn't really been um, thoroughly stretched uh, the way we like them um, as yet in the tournament. Um, possibly coming in the tournament, one of the favourites as well, just from um, well, from um, he, the fact he's uh, more of a sort of frequent player. He is possibly the, some the, of the other players. The, um, I'm on practices, I keep on saying this, but that's ridiculous. To be <laughs> in tournament play, I haven't come from a period where you, you practice. I mean, that's just unfair on the rest of us. I said he's a ringer, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, but so, yes, um, hopefully we will see some good matches from them today. We have the Tan Terranoff Tilt and the um, indeterminable colour of uh, Kainal at the moment. I'm not sure what he favours at the moment. I think but, he's probably um, go with the flow kind of guy, but. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever pops up. But yes, um, so it's now, as we're getting towards the tail end of the tournament, um, it's going to be a best of five on this. Mm. So um, first of three, we'll take it. And um, as always, the first map is a coin toss. And then from then on, the loser will pick the map going forward. Mm. But yes, um, so hopefully, um, I mean, let's see. So just from the offset, we've said, well, we'd like to see both players stretched. But what? Well, what do you think we could see out of the series, Mr. Mohan? Well, best of fives are funny. We've seen best of threes so far. Mm. And I think it's important in a best of five to keep your opponent guessing. So, mm. much like uh, you, your bad self did uh, against uh, Zag Zag, throw a bit of cheese isn't a bad idea. Uh, throw in a bit of cheese, throw in a proxy ratch, hatch, sorry, throw in our proxy racks, or throw go sky, do something a bit different maybe hmm. early doors to keep your opponent from be getting comfortable you want to keep That's them it. thinking they don't want them to get into routine thinking they've got the measure of you early doors first match most both people will be quite nervous and, and thinking right what, what am i going to get what am i going to get i'm not sure they'll spend an awful lot of time scouting and if you can throw something at them that maybe they weren't expecting it can set up the rest of the series on the back of that that's it um i think in particular um tilt is going to have uh, the hardest time adopting to the meta game here because yeah. um he is known for i mean he did try mech against was it adve and uh with um limited success Indeed. Say. <laughs> but um, i think yeah he'd be the one stretched by this the more just as he's got to try and get his head around the meta game and try and keep king guessing because otherwise by match three you know may have the very measure of him and um that'll be it would just be a a whitewash yeah i think the other thing we've seen of kinder i think kinder will not change style whatsoever at the start here Mm. He'll drone up, he will get to the point where he is just um, droning and then waiting for a run by or something. He'll wait to counter attack and use the speed of Zerg to his advantage in that case. So he'll let um, Luke Tilt march across the, the map uh, and while he's doing that he'll take out his base. He'll take out his legs from underneath him and then have enough back home to defend himself. I think that'll be Kinder's game plan, and then play it as red. If he gets something different off the first game, you know, he might try a Night of Swarm or something a bit more exciting in the second game. Uh, and I think Kinder will know this is his, his toughest game so far. I mean, he hasn't played Mir Yu, so I mean, that's pretty... Well, that, yeah, that would be the toughest game. We, <laughs> we may see him again in the final. You never know. Indeed. So he'll know that himself. So he might... It, I'd expect him to play quite conservatively and quite safe in the first game as, as they feel each other out. I think the onus is on Tilt to show that he's got another successful style in him. That's, That's like it, the yeah. name of Marble Ball. That's it, he's really got to do I mean, it, yeah, normally just the double M ball, just the old Marines and Medivacs mm -hmm. in favour, but um, yeah, certainly if, if Roach has come up, then he could go 
more marauder heavy, but I think um, with the map choices, the first map will be Nevelopolis. Um It's, I don't know, I always believe it's sort of somewhat Terran favoured, just in that um, you have the high ground, and um, so I mean there could be the possibility of a quick Reaper rush, which I doubt we'll see. But, no, um, I've never seen that even tell to tell. No, but I mean, uh, it's just that the bases are fairly segregated, and um, you've got the higher and lower levels, and although the second is a bit of quite an open mouth to try and protect, um, I don't know, a couple of siege tanks or just a, a line of um, supply depots could get himself set in. Whereas, um, I don't know, he could even feel cheeky. I'm not sure if it's the ESL version. No, it is not. It's um, the, the standard version of yes, Metal Blockers. So uh, expansions. That's it. So one of them could feel a bit cheeky. Kingo could be cheeky and um, just go and take that as his natural. You never know. It could do. The other thing, I mean, Tilt will be hoping to get the late, late game in an awful lot of these games. Mm. If he can get three three Marines with STEM, with Medivax, you know, he'll feel fairly good about that, I think. I think if he can get to that stage, he'll think, right, I have to measure him. Uh, I haven't see, had seen, kind of have to go Broodlord, brood anything tier three yet. Uh, and he'll think, if I can get that stage and I can get those balls rolling, I'll have this. So, I mean, maybe, you know, Tilt will be thinking, play for the long game. To the point where I can get my uh, mass volume of marines and get my economy up, that kind of stuff, and we'll see how it goes. Mm, quite possibly, but as we've seen already in the tournament, we can't let uh, Zerg sort of rest on his laurels and sort of like go macro up and sort of get a few hatcheries down. Indeed, the, just... uh, the economy just overtakes the, the, the other races. They have an ability to produce units so quickly that um, they don't have to be doing a steady macro, they can do a very quick macro uh, as opposed to other races. Mm, so we've got uh, yeah, a fair number of good players coming down, but I think uh, all we can do is uh, just hit the play button and uh, see what unfolds before us, Mr. Ohan. Indeed. So I've got my game up. I'm good to go, Foster. Okay, so for yep. on faster in 3, 2, 1, play. Okay. Okay, 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 so we have in the uh, very tan trunks, the tan tilt of Terran in the southwestern corner. Um, off very quick there with the uh, pleasant trees and Indeed. with the green zerg i should have spotted that before in the um northeastern corner yeah so yes um as we say metalopolis um i quite like this map really just because you can i don't know the the sort of primary your main base area it's so big that you can sort of get away with some sneaky play you can sort of like have a uh, hide things away that's it you can sort of either try to hide your own barracks in your base or in fact uh sort of even like try and build up your barracks in their base Indeed, you can. Uh, especially if uh, Kaler's not going to creep spread right the way across the space. Um, mm. I haven't really noticed him as creep spread being a big factor of his playing out, to be fair. So, mm. um, you'll never know. He's went for the scout with the overlord for the uh, close spawn position. There's nothing there. They're in cross position as it is. Um, let's see, the supply deal was just about to finish for um, Tilt. And he'll probably go straight for barracks here. And yeah, yeah, standard timings, yeah. And he does. Pops it down. Uh, whereas Kindler is rather unsurprisingly uh, Mark run up to either 200 or 300. Now we'll see whether he goes hatch first or whether he goes uh, spawn and pull. Mm. I think he will probably go hats first. He's going to make a ladder in a so, second. Yeah. Yes, he's going um, for hats first, he is indeed. Yeah, he's just checking, uh, sending out the early scout as well, which will just get through before he. I know, and the scout of tilt as well comes out, but you know, finds him second attempt. Um, he's not really going to see a lot. Tilt is going for uh, just uh, no gas at the moment. He's just going straight up. Um, yeah, barracks. He'll probably throw another racks down. I imagine. Oh no, there goes refinery. There's the refinery goes, and uh, yeah, Kena's not going to move until there's something there to kill him. Um, and he's just going for his his hatch here. Going for economy first, rather on supplies and me. He played quite conservatively. Uh, kind of stolen the gas for a bit of extra scouting there. I think he's been watching me play. Um, <laughs> although I, I know, yeah, he's, he's cancelled it just so he can. Uh, yeah, he's just going to keep going there until something it, yeah, comes along to, to the kill him. Yeah, um, I mean it's going to be about another um, 15 seconds, but two yeah marines stacked up in the barracks already, and the orbital command just about to finish. Mm -hmm. So he's going to get evicted fairly soon. He always takes the gas again. It is a, it's a really nice tactic because if you can distract the player at the front enough, well, all you're really doing, it's a bit like attacking the SCV when they're building their wall. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just looking to distract or throw them off their game ever so slightly. Um, yeah, and get them so. away from thinking about what they're doing. Um, 
Oh. Oh. Do you see what I see? Oh, the early expo from Tilt? No, or the, the Reaper. Oh, I see. The, uh, yeah, Tech Lab going down there and a uh, Reaper. A Reaper I was, right. um, I didn't even check for that, you know? I was, uh, I saw the Tech Lab come down, I thought I was going to see a stim as soon as you got enough gas coming yeah. out, but no. And uh, came all still, uh, refusing to stop doing that gas trick. Well, he's <laughs> going to get out track. now and he's going to see it. The gas trick has worked a treat, look at that. And he sees the two more racks coming down also, and he sees... And, he sees... and he's going to, oh, he tried to take the gas again. The but he's seen the Reaper, exactly right. Uh, so the gas trick for as cheesy and as stupid as it sounds, he uh, has done absolute trick. He's thrown down a spine crawler just now, in both his natural and his main, and he'll be fine now. Yeah, that's it. The uh, the Reaper threat is um, fairly neutralised. Um, Tilt will continue to get a couple more Reapers. He's not sending Marine as scout, a secondary scout, to see uh, what's going on there. Yep, indeed. But, um, yeah, the spine crawl is already completed, so um, yeah, he's not going to see a lot. Yeah, it's a pretty good, it's, as I've probably said before, um, Reapers as a Zerg player don't really bother me because they're very easily countered by the spine crawlers. Mm -hmm. uh, if you build one as a matter of course, especially if you're playing a macro game um, as, is, as a Zerg, um, you just, you'll just you throw one of those up, at least one, at uh, your main, one at your natural, and it should you know protect you from most early pressure of that sort. Mm -hmm. But no, we see the two Reapers now. He's uh, he's, he's jumping yeah, in. stopped up too, and he's and here, uh, yeah. come. here comes the Queen to um, look after it, and they're going to be shot down very easily. Yeah, I think we'll not see too much here. Is he going to get a drum kill? Did he get one? You just lost one drone. Did go down. Two drones of yeah, one drone, and then the one that he scouted with, and then. Yeah, here's the first lot of um, Zergen popped out for Kindler as he goes for, uh, yeah, he's got a fairly hefty 11 food lead at the moment without really doing anything. He's got a couple of Zerglings and uh, drones. It tilts about halfway through stem here at the moment as he pumps out uh, a load of Marines and he tries to get his bunker up before the Zerglings arrive. Uh, Kim will just go and have a push and see, He'd probably take a couple of lings and just see what's there at the expansion without having to waste an overlord. Um, as you can see in around behind, behind the statue here, there's a big <coughs> space there for Zerg to hide in. It's a classic place for more from Um Just run in, because as you see Tilt has his bunker there at the front. and But he isn't covering any of the uh, access entry in at the side here. Mm -hmm. That's it. So he threw one Zergling in there just to see what was there. And there's 26 Zerglings in the way here to back up what he's already got. So stem is finished. And Tilt's going to go for a little push. I'm going to go for a little time and push. And I think actually, is that what Kinder's put those Zerglings there for to try and sandwich them? Quite possibly, yeah, to run in behind them. and. Oh, uh, but he's mm. not. He's going the other way. He's going for the, the natural here. I see there's nothing in the bunker at the moment either, they haven't been no. moved in. Um. So will he pull his... Oh. The, yeah, so as good as that is, he's left his supply depot down. Oh god. Uh, the only thing is, the push has come... No, he's just left them at the uh, Zonlaga. Hmm. He's just trying to do enough to distract them. That's it. Um, yeah. So at the moment, uh, Till is actually uh, going for a max mag play. He's um, getting a siege tank. Yes, indeed. We've got that one ring. So he's managed to pull all his SCVs. What did he lose? A right. um, couple of SCVs, I think. He's lost a pretty decent amount. Of CCs. He's lost 13 units. Hmm. You know, he's he's lost a bit more resources wise than than Kindler. But he's he's been taken up, whereas uh, mm -hmm. Kindler hasn't. So we've got this little push with. Uh, Marines, he's quite a lot of Zerglings there to hold back, and he's done a really effective job of walling off here at the front. With his uh, Evo Chambers. Evo Chambers. Yep. So he's, he gets us around here, and this is the thing that's very easy. And Stim, Stim has finished. Stim yeah, made no difference there whatsoever. Um, so all that uh, Kindler's done after that little attack is build 16 drones to try and get ahead <laughs> that way. 
and he's got all these links streaming across the map uh, that he's turned into being he's turning a couple into being links got this very scary push that's it um it depends yeah siege tech is going to be about another 20 seconds yeah unfortunately so yeah there you go so he'll probably have to sack these scvs not in all honesty <laughs> Oh, that was a rather full hearty move actually. actually. He's got his supply depots up, but he's got his uh, tanks, which is good. He'll probably just have to sack the SCVs that are there in the mule. That's it, Seek mode has just finished, so yeah. That's rather nice timing, although he does lose the mules on the SCVs. Um, he can lift the base whenever he's ready, but at the moment, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't need to. The, the killers won't run away. Will uh, he save the bunker? Yes, he's going to get this repair on. So I'll just check with you. What time stamp are you looking at? Uh, um, what are you taking along? Uh, 12.10, 12.11, 12.12. I'm about five seconds behind. I think so. But that's so cool. I'll slow you down. I'll slow it down a little bit so you can catch up. Uh, I'm at 12.30. Cool, okay. You just carry on. Okay, you, where are you? Yeah, okay, I'm 12.35 now. 12.39, 40. Yeah, okay. 40, yep. Yeah, we'll go. Right, 40, so we're back we're in. Good. So, uh, yeah, Kinlan's just throwing a wee Zergling there at the front, just to see what's happening. He's thrown down another expansion here. Mm. It's got up. And he's got a good, healthy 30-foot advantage here. If I look at the units, he's in 55 drones to tilts 28. Um, he hasn't got very many units on the field, I suppose, although he's just popped a whole load of Zerglings, a lorry load of them. And if I look at them, they're 1-1. One, one. They're pretty... Um, healthy. Kindler's using this wee spot behind the, the tower just to hide his banelings in, which is a classic one for um, for Zerg to do. He's got this siege tank sitting there, but it's on siege. Yeah, it needs to be sieged. Why is it not? <laughs> <laughs> I think this factory's just, um, there we go, now the siege. Um, yeah, the uh, the factory's just a waypoint into that position. Oh, that's good, that's good. So he's going to go for a wee push to seek out these banelings. Is he going to see them? No, he does see them. Radar, but he does. yeah, he's watching his yeah. radar. But he's trying to secure an expansion. That's what he's thinking about. There are a lot of zerglings on the field, mm -hmm. but he's managed to keep the supply gap reasonably close. It's twenty in it, and twenty in it's pretty much all the drones. So as you can see, um, the army val uh, the armies will be reasonably similar. There's six siege tanks out here. Uh, which will be very effective for countering most of this stuff. They are nil nil, uh, and his marines are not not as well. So he's, he's concentrating on getting out units rather than, than upgrading them. That's it. I mean, um, now you can see the uh, reaction from Kamo. He's now the spire is nearly complete yeah, is. as well, and as is Bar as well. There's no detection currently on the field till either at the mm -hmm. moment. There's you know, there's two entry bays, so he could uh, get a couple of turrets done, but yeah, no threat. Speed at that for his overlords as well. Mm. I'll be well. Now we've got the uh, huge stream of zerglings uh, running across the I field. See them. Yes, they're coming to that uh, third base. They're going to check for the expansions before they run past. And um, we've got a small group of marines going out for a little, a little move. I'm surprised that Tilt hasn't got any medivacs so far. Mm -hmm. uh, especially seeing he's been is he's a bit hemmed in here. That's it. Um, yeah, he's um, just spent all his gas thus far into um, yeah into the tanks. On the factories. And he's got a, only got a couple of bindings more from here out of the whole lot, so he's not wasting a terrible lot of gas, Kindler. He's putting in a bit of tech, and he's he's spreading his creep. His creep's actually looking not bad, um, especially for only having the number of queens that he has on the uh, on the field. What has he got three three queens? He's got. Uh -huh. I just check the thing. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So he's got three queens for uh, for four bases here. So he's probably wanting to be getting another one out and he's going for infestation pit probably to go to hive rather than doing anything else he's working on his finishing his 2-2 and uh, yeah looks starting to just go on to his expansion here comes a little push from the zerg lanes what have we got to probably turn back there maybe he thinks he's got enough to take it has he got enough they're all 1-1 one, one. the tanks aren't there the tanks have disappeared uh, that's all disappeared pretty much everything disappeared well, Just, uh, the tanks on the high ground. He didn't really affect the mineral line uh, greatly. Still, two zerglings there that have caught a bit of damage. But mm. if I go to the units lost, 
it's actually the amount of resources lost for both teams is now pretty much That's dead easy. Level six k. So that was actually a pretty good engagement for uh, for Tilt, and he mm. still has these four siege tanks left that are just going to finish um, Vega Weapons 1. He's about to go 2-1 on his Marines, and he's going to go for a little push. There's going to be a Zerg run by coming the other way, scurry, yeah. with a couple of meters. Oh dear, dear, dear. Yeah, he really does need to, um, yeah, that's it. I'm mean, trying to sort of counteract against the Zerg in that way. Well, he's trying to stick the gas. Ones. That's interesting. That uh, looks like straight for the gas. On that expansion rather than going for the drones. Um, the Zerglings are coming flooding back. Um, and there's quite, this is quite a decent push. He's got the siege jar, but quickly surrounded it. Yeah, he's going to be taken down fairly calmly there. Yeah, yeah. You know. Now, Luke's getting, yeah, this is, he's starting to get his um, units to the point whereby they're getting upgraded and he's starting to get this late game stage we're talking about. Mm. Uh, where his marines are getting upgraded, he has stem and he can start taking things out pretty quickly. As you can see, his marine micro is pretty good. He's dart, dart in and out here, he's letting his tanks soak up an awful lot of the, the damage here. Taking out his wall, all those drones are being thrown away. A good macro, and Kainer's in a bit of trouble here. That's it, one tank goes down, but um, there's still the hidden tank inside the palm tree, so... Um, it's, it's all being up now, and the battle of Mints goes down. But if you look at the supply now, mm, that's it. look at the yeah. food supply, Kainer has an awful lot of... Um, that's it, I mean, he's now sat on three bases. Yeah, he's now sat on three bases, but he only has the drones on one base. Mm -hmm, At the so... moment, he's had everything else he's sacked and trying to mop up attack. Um, so now, the macro machine. Down, yeah, the macro machine. He needs to try and take. Uh, he's trying. You should try and take a third now. But Kindler's actually been really smart. He's concentrated on the fact that he's spread creep along all his places. So he's forced to look in the uh, close spawn position here mm -hmm. to take a base. But he's he's still got a a decent advantage food wise. There's four mutas coming out here, which will do great for extending expansions here. And he's going mm -hmm. to get two one on his meters, or maybe it's two not. Maybe he's meant for. I can't really see because he hasn't really got any out on the field. <laughs> but looks going for his two two for his weapons, or two not for his ten, and three three for his marines, which is the big thing for him. Yeah, he's going to be not. He's going to be two not for uh, his meters. And there's quite a lot of meters here. He's, going, he's starting to go mainly as well mm -hmm. to counter all these marines. But we'll see. He's going to go for a little push here. I'd say he'll go try and deny this expansion straight out off the bat. That's, I mean, the army supply, um, as Kinlaw's had to concentrate more on sort of re-droning himself, but because he was taking down to just one piece of drones. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, his now army supply has fallen slightly behind at the moment, but at the moment, with, uh, with him pushing across the map, he's going to have uh, the third base. That should go down quite easily now, hopefully. But for some reason, um, a large drone transfer, I must have seen them coming in. Mm. He's coming back, he's coming back to base. Uh, he hasn't spotted this this expansion that, that uh, Luke has. Which is a bit funny, I know, yeah. he has the... Um, he has some we such good vision along the rest, most of the rest of the map. Good so. reaction there from Luke. Uh, he did stem them from the back of the back of the back. Which is good, I mean, they will be able to take that but and taking down that third base as well. And Kindler has lost over four, four and a half thousand more resources over the course of this game. Now he has had the stronger economy, so it's not all just as clean and dry as that. But they're very, very even food-wise, and it's a, a bit of a ding dong here. And Kindler's going to run out of money soon if he doesn't get. It's going to be skin. Yeah. Yep. Those mutas and zerglings, especially in the numbers that he's producing them, cost an awful lot of money to keep on reproducing this kind of level. He'll, uh, he'll cost an awful lot of money, and he's probably wondering where the money's coming from. Yeah. Where is Tilt getting this money from? He has an expansion somewhere, and he just has to find it. His 3-3 is just about to finish. This is going to be big. So he's trying to take out that Overlord to try and take the uh, expansions. And I, I actually think if Luke had the Medivacs out here, mm -hmm. this would be all over pretty soon. That's it. So now he's um, yeah, making it known it's now a country fortress 
is a hidden base and it's got a couple of missile turrets, so yeah, even if it's discovered. Running. Here comes a bit of a push now at the front door here. Is the Tanks are not seen. Oh, that's, that's okay. It's okay, yep. Those tanks, oh, those marines are 3 3 now. Oh, God, but for a medivac. <laughs> He's just thrown down his first starport now. Um, the mutas run away, and I think the game is very much in Tilt's favour here. All these Certainly. mutas are, yep. you know, they're good, but as you've seen, you caught in the wrong position, they melt away very, very quickly. That's it. And the big um, marine push is starting to come. Marine tank, marine tank. I'm surprised he hasn't brought an overlord with him or something, or... or or sorry, something along. Let's get back to oh, all those paintings. Okay. So oh boy. So all those tanks are just going to die. That didn't go so well. And now it swung back. So, <laughs> <laughs> just shows you these mutas are quite strong now. We have two not, and they're going to be. Oh, oh mercy. God. What the bloody target? He's going to target. going to target them the reactors. So we took a one reactor. That's it, but you can see it, I mean, um, just with the barracks he has here, he has all packs which just aren't enough for the station. Okay. They're all sort of like queued up to five families um, each, which is hugely inefficient now. So these units are, you know, there still is quite a lot of them. He's That's it, they're still at a critical mass, yeah. He's thinning them out, he's doing a decent job of thinning them out, but he just can't, he's only got those four barracks which are, sorry, five barracks which are stunting him. Mm -hmm. Three, 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 three marines, three right, well he's, he's down to the last couple of meters. Uh, Kenner knows it, and he's getting out of there. there right, Kenner's managed to get this base up and running. Down the bottom again, and he's going for another stream of the Zerglings, in which he'll almost certainly try and attack this, uh, these two expansions. That's it. Um, I sort of nephew knows really Does about he the. Still not know? I still don't know. He ran past He doesn't know anything about it. Yeah, you are right hmm. there. They're coming into the. Yeah. Okay, so he's got a surprise up. That base tank will go down. The base will go down as well. It's on fire. The meters are there. It will go down. Pretty good engagement yeah, there good. though, you know, the, the yeah. Marines came in to save the day. And because there was two other, um... Yeah, there's the two other bits up top, which he still doesn't know anything about. He uh, ran straight past them as well. But now the, uh, Electric Fortress on the, um, expansion of the secret base is now finished, yeah, and so, and has uh, got the, um, the gold base here. In the middle, mm. it's just taken. God, back and forth, back and forth. The advantage mm. is still Kindler now that he's got those mining bases. That's it, he just still needs small production facilities at the moment. He's getting his medevacs just starting to come out. He needs more barracks. It's unlike him. It just shows you the, the how pressure affects you. I think he's spotted it. I think he's going now into the uh, secret bases by the looks of it. Yeah, just... he does no. No, still not yet. <laughs> oh god, it just shows you the importance of scouting. We keep on talking about it. Knowing what your opponent's doing, what they've got, where they've got mm -hmm. money. And it's very like Kinder because he's. Uh, they do, they're moving in. Ah, uh, here they go. Apparently, Fortune is so. It'll go down here fairly quickly to Fortune. But they will take an awful lot of Zergers with them. So the first one goes down. He needs to stop, which is good. Yeah, that's quite good. It's just as well time to get to the pantry. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Just, the, the they'll just. They'll move they're gonna meet another S, yes, so he's gonna decide to get out of there. So, Kim is now down in food. <laughs> yeah, although he can be 36 or, um 20 36 Zergrings coming out straight away. He's at that stage of the game where he's relying only on simple units. They're 2-2. Two -two. He hasn't had the chance to upgrade. Did he get his adrenal glands? He hasn't got that yet. The um, the extra speed for the Zerglings. He's just been too busy, and here comes another pretty scurry push. This time with a Medivac, with another two just on the one. way. Yep. <laughs> and this is going to, except he has them rallied into the base rather than following the, um, rallied to the troops. That's it, he needs more. He's, uh, um, yeah, very quickly going to be added. Um, and there's the, um, oh, there he's still setting up, he's going to come back. 
He sees that what's going to happen is gold base is going almost certainly going to go down. There is not the forces here that the Zergonies to deal with. The Zergonies are just going to rally back to home uh, and prepare to get a couple of families up, but he really hasn't got a ton of force there. No, that's it. He's going to push forward now, otherwise um, he's going to be overwhelmed eventually. Those couple of many back to four are there. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. The other two many back are coming. Uh, he's getting vehicle weapons three. If he can siege up here, all the banelands can lift them. Oh, yeah. Oh dear, he just never prepared for the siege. He's still. Oh. He's get his money back back home before. He may, if he loses one, that's okay. He can't lose tons of them until the siege. Yeah. That's... He had a chance. That's a big mistake. He had, um, yeah, he still had his production facilities and he still had, uh, like, two grand. And Keeler had nothing. He didn't have a lot. No. Nope. That's a pretty big mistake. Mm. Because I think Tilt had that just won in that last encounter. Yeah, it was so close. That was it. So, uh, I mean, that one uh, went on for 30 odd minutes as well. 33 minutes, um... Oh my god. Hmm, certainly a strange one there. Um, he did call it. But I think he knew um, his acute way of his uh, money scenario. He knew he well, had two grand left. Um, after that was gone, that was pretty much it, really, because um, his secret base was now being taken down. Yes. He couldn't really expand anywhere else because of the but mobility of King Law's army. Indeed, but Kindler had nothing left at the end of the game. He had. Mm. Four Banelings, three Mutas, and 23 Zerglings, and 69p in the bank. Yep. <laughs> he had nothing left. His base that he had up is not long from being mined out. He didn't have the money to invest in a new base. He would have had to sit back, at which point Tilt could have... I mean, the Marines that are sitting there could easily have handled the push that was coming across the map. Well, that's it. With um, nearly two grand for the bank, it would be, uh, yeah, 50 Marines. He could knock out of that. Or hey. my maths entirely... No, it's about 20-odd, isn't it? No. Ugh, I hate you, 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 you're, you're awesome, this. It's, uh, if there's two grand in the bank, <laughs> it's about 40 Marines. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> 40 Marines at 3-3 would have easily cleaned out what was still there for um, for Kainler. That was uh, an Idra-style GG, if you ask me. Mm. Oh, Just didn't call him a twat or something. Yeah. Uh, Tilt will be raging for me saying that, but oh my god, he... Blew that big time. That game was just won. But it just goes to show when you're playing the game, your perception of what actually is going on, it seems like your opponent has tons of stuff all the time. Mm. Uh, and he probably thought, looking back and what got taken out there, that he thought, oh, he's got a flood of Zergings and just keep on going. He's had the goal base for a while. He's obviously got other bases. He must have thousands and thousands of cash here. It's a GG. I can't get spending my money quickly enough. I'm in trouble. You know. That's it. Yeah, especially against the Zerg, because it is like a magic hat approach. It's like, wow, okay, they have nothing but 10 seconds later. Oh, great, we've got an entire new army. Indeed. It so. is. It's, it's sort of like the great unknown with them. With the Terran, you can, you can see, oh, they're massing this up, and they're getting that, and they're getting that. But with Zerg, it's very much, yeah, it comes out of nowhere, and they suddenly have a giant army. So it's like the, the unknown factor, and thinking, oh, he's had the ball for a while. Yeah, he's had five grand in the bank. He can just three max about four, to, yeah, four times. Indeed. So that's game one. I can't mm. believe that actually. <laughs> we haven't seen I that have... yet in no, the tournament. No. We have had another sort of nice GG at another time where I think it was by me actually. Where, um, yeah, I just I called it a day early just because I thought, well, yeah, it's not oh, gonna happen. Your second game against Telt when you had the army sitting at the side, which you didn't really know <sighs> about. That's me. <laughs> well, uh, dear. we've been there, etc. But yeah, that's game one, and I'd say, oh God, Tilt will be feeling quite deflated off that. Even <laughs> he'll be feeling even more deflated when he watches it back. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I wonder it, it would have both players would have felt very tired after that because it was a very much ding dong back and forth. One person took the lead, the other person fell by the wayside, had to rebuild. Then the other person pushed too quickly, had a bad encounter. You know, because they were trying to finish the game, because they'd had a good encounter. 
Uh, That's it, and I mean, yeah, just in particular, um, even with the tech choice it was, it did stay very low tech all through the game. Till sort of his main army was Marines and um, with Kano with Banes yeah. and yeah, Zergling. But I mean, the sort of majority of the army was sort of like it won. Mm -hmm. So it would have seemed that much longer as well, just the, the repeated encounters. So, what does Tilt do? Is he game bound here? Um, what's Tilt do? Um, I don't know, more of the same. Well, I mean, he'd be feeling quite deflated. Um, maybe try something quicker. Maybe try, maybe not, sort of, yeah, not let the Zerg um, get several bases under him. Maybe just try and, maybe, I don't know, from uh, watching my last game and the success of it, just try and throw down a, a dozen Marines super get fast and throw them at the base. He could also yeah. get out Hellions as well. I mean, for what um, Kindler threw down there, which was pretty much just Zerglings drones for the first six, seven minutes. Mm. Hellions, six or seven Hellions would have done a great job against all that. So it could go that way. I also think Kindler will switch up style here as well. He'll not play the drawn out macro game, I think, he'll either. Mm. Um, I think he'll probably switch up because if it was me playing and I just played a 32 minute game, which for all intents and purposes I probably feel like I lost. Um, you won't. You'll be feeling tired, deflated. You'll not want to play another thirty-minute game <laughs> no, against it. somebody. So you'll you're naturally will go right. I want to end this. I want to end this quickly. If I can get a quick two 0 up on him, um, then game three should be you know fairly straightforward. The mm -hmm. opponent will be deflated in this best of uh, best of five, and I'll take that three 0 So that's it. Um, yeah. Um. I don't know, I, I came or could, yeah, sort of just throw a rush down, throw down something a bit crazy. Six just uh, Yeah, it could do, because I mean, it's, um, he now has the, the one up, he can, he has the freedom to... He throw away a game, so to speak, and even if he loses with a six pull, you know, it hasn't really showed his hand with anything, really. All he's done is keep his opponent balanced, and the fact that there could be a six pull coming again. That's it, I mean, it could, yeah, pay, pay in dividends in the later in games. The long term. So he, he has got that game up, and he could just throw it away, as to speak. So if you're ready for game two. I'm good, good, good. Yep. I'll switch to the game. Mm -hmm. And if we're ready to go in three, two, one, play. Yep. And I start with Kindler in the green. Green Zerg up in the top right. And That's it. And we've got the town tilt. The famous now famous town tilt of uh Town Town of Tilt. The town town of Tilt. <laughs> I messed that up, dear God. I'll never make this a living at this. Anyway. Uh, he's down in the southwest. On what map is it? Uh, is it Daybreak? It's, no, it's quite no. That's the yeah, the one with the um the, the Ray Central Bar all the, the way. Ray Central the Bar and the, the difference between Daybreak and the other one is that the expansion to the third just to the right here is open from the natural. Mm. Whereas your yes. third is down below on Daybreak. That's right. Yes. So just players droning up, uh Kindler's getting off of fancy, he's just on the extractor trick. <laughs> it's there just to get his extra, extra uh, drone. So he's just going all drone. In this case, I, there's no early pull from him. I just, I wonder if I haven't seen your game with Mr. Kilt, we'll just throw down all those Marines to get the early pressure on. Because he, he'd be thinking, I need to stop him from droning up. He would have thought, the reason he GG'd is because he thought his, his opponent had a much stronger economy than him. That's it. So we'll be trying to stop that. Absolutely, 100%. That'll be this one mission here. I've got to stop and taking bases. And the best way to do that is with lots of Marines early game. That, yeah, it will either A, um, take out an early base that's been thrown down, or B, um, force King or into um, a more sort of army-oriented, uh, sort of just economic um, bent, really. Yeah. And then just make means, yeah, the advantage of having the, the early second hatchery will be just entirely wiped out because it's was time making uh, sort of uh, fighting units rather than just droning up. The other thing I would have done if I was Tilt was pull one of these SFEs and get a wall off quickly. Stop Kindler getting into his base. I mean that was one of the big things from the first game as well. He seen that Reaper come out. Perfect gonna get timing. Him, uh, and he's got it down, yeah. There you go. But I mean with um with that timing um you can do it and you can yeah send the second um, SCV and of the supply depot at quite a nice time without sacrificing any marine, I mean any marine or SCV production as well. Mm -hmm. But normally, just for ease sake and just for a slight, yeah, just for slightly better mining times, um, yeah, most people just use the same SCV from the barracks to build the Indeed. supply depot. Um, but he obviously isn't. I, 
I don't think he's really worried about cheese at the moment at all. No, no, it's not going to happen. Um, it's not going to happen. Well, from um, till anyway, he's um, gone for the economy. He's getting a second rax now. He's yes. building marines, but um, not anywhere near quick enough to um, do some cheese. Yeah, and Kindler's just going to take the two Zen Lagas here. I think that's his only um, objective here with these two Zerglings. And he's thrown down a road swore in. Early roach. Uh, Early roach. Um, Tilt has thrown up his second refinery, so maybe Tilt is, well, possibly more oriented towards a long game or just more, more mech. possibly Banshee. Yeah, Could early be. Banshee. Yeah, like but that. you would have expected a second building. He's because almost their barracks. It'll yeah, be. True. Oh. I don't know. Well, that's a second gas is a bit. Maybe he's going Marauder. Maybe that's what the whole thing is. But he it's hasn't got far too much. Yeah, he's got far too much gas for that. He's, um. Yeah, I don't know. Any Terran worth the sort knows that, um. Yeah, there we go, Factory. Siege tank. He'd be looking yeah. to go for it, but this, oh god, that roach warns up. There's seven roaches coming out. And oh. that is um, a nice, really sort of, uh, especially just those seven roaches um, coming out your front door will, yeah, catch most pair unprepared. A lot we, of the time. We, we were just talking about this before. Cast, he's, it's a pretty much all in in many ways, but what it does, or what it has, is it can take down this wall very, very quickly. These supply mm. depots will not be long life. I know. Well, in particular, it's about the reactor, which has got even um, sort of less health, or is it less armor, I believe. No, it's about the same as a supply depot. He's but yeah, that will only. Yes. Yeah. We can all know he's um. Well, he's just still. He looks like he's just pumping tech. Then he's researching combat shield and stim. He is. Which is um very expensive on the gas. He's going for the tech lab on the factory as well. So yeah, Marines are not going to hold this. This is not good. There it is. Oh, he's oh, we need to back those Marines off. So they, no, they've got upper ground position now, so it's... Oh no, there we go. Get, he's found a sweet come. position. He's come. Ah, he just didn't get to the uh, reactor to we end up in time. And this is... Pretty bad. Uh, he's, he's... What else is coming out from King or? Depends what else. Uh, that's it, here we go, he's pulled the SCV, so if he sends the SCVs in first. See, that's good. That's good. But, no, he's any he to get to those Marines, that is unfortunate. So he hasn't sacrificed everything yet. There's so, two Marines out here that's just not, uh, uh, just not enough. He's uh, called him. It is a time of push, it's a pretty much all in, in many cases, because mm -hmm. if Tilt is prepared for it, I mean, it's so far ahead in the game. Um, I've played, um, in particular, against the um, computer AI. If you put them as Zerg and put them as hard or very hard, mm -hmm. they will always uh, throw those early roaches at you every damn time. They and are so, so it is, effective. That's it. Every, yeah, just for some reason, they, they will play no other game, but they will always throw those roaches at you at about um, yeah, the six-minute mark. You're knocking on your front door. So and it, and it is really effective, but luckily, yeah, I've... You can sort of, well, I can counteract that now by just getting, if you have six marines instead of the four at the six top of your ramp, and then... a bunker, you know... Not even that, but I mean, it's helpful. If you if you see if you see the road warrant and you throw the bunker, then it's great, it's easy. But six marines, um, and then sort of just with the um, the extra you can hold with them, will sort of take down those uh, seven roaches, mm -hmm. just with the DPS. But no, um, Tilt didn't see it coming. Um, he was uh, taking up for the long game. He had this factory coming down. The first tank was about to pop. Um, wouldn't have a huge amount against uh, the five roaches remaining. He could have held it though, just about. He could yeah, have just about held it. He wasn't too far from holding it anyway. No. And it just shows you the the balanced nature in which it. Uh, he could have held that. On. But the other he thing, that, the other yeah. thing that would cost him from holding it was the fact that that reactor was taken away. Is chance for building a marine at the front. He could have got at least one marine out there and an alert marine, and the reactor wouldn't have been the easy target to take down either. Slightly. I mean, um, looking at it at the very end of the game here, he could have had this easy because um, the tank was just about to pop, and also in about 15 seconds, two more marines, three more marines would have popped as well. Mm -hmm. And those three roaches out sort of close to the base, they're on, they're on NAF all health as well. The tank would have taken down those the three on its own. There was nothing streaming across the map as well, because was what, looking at that, uh, Kindler had decided that he was going to try and macro up behind, do a bit of damage, and macro up behind that. Um, mm. So, again, maybe a slightly early GG, but uh, I think the fact that um, Kindler's looked pretty imperious so far in these games, 
is starting to tell. It starts to play in your mind, thinking that the, the opponent is better than you. When he's just playing, he's doing basic builds. I mean, he's been building Zergling, Ling, Muta, uh, doing that kind of stuff. He's he's went for an early roots push there, which is a, uh, an all-in typey build. Mm -hmm. um, so he's not, he's, you know, he's not reinventing how to play StarCraft. He, he has good macro skills behind it and has good. good um, micro and, and good uh, good game sense but you know it's not unbeatable no no certainly not um even the sort of early scout would have been helpful but um i don't know in this situation yeah he could have still held up but i don't know i'd say the, the game count at the moment is two nil to king law but the mind game count is 10 nil to king law and um, tilt is telling just tearing himself apart at the moment i'd suggest um i don't know maybe favorably comparing to ronnie o'sullivan but he's his own worst enemy mm-hmm a lot of time if he gets it in his head that oh no fuck okay I'm right behind now that's it now that's sort of the actor's down he's when he's taking out half my SCVs I'm never going to get back in the game fuck it GG yeah. GG whereas that's... it's an all in play in many regards you know if he holds it off he is sitting very pretty for the rest of the game he has his uh, stim was nearly finished he has his combat sheet nearly finished he has three barracks up he can produce stuff quickly and he almost has his mules He's actually sitting pretty good. If he can that's hold it. Off. With that, yep, that's it. Just um, yeah, two tech lab, well, three uh, barracks, his double command, and his working factory. He leaves the after, yeah, the um, resources to supply that as well. Mm -hmm. So he threw in the towel early. Um, he's uh, feeling it. He's uh, really getting uh, bogged down with the mind games. I'd suggest. Probably, but still all the play for. Um, no, yeah, that's it. I think he's shown again in these games that he could very easily beat Taylor. That's it, if he had held that then... Yeah, he could he easily still be 2-0 the other way? It could have been, yeah, if he held it and, uh, yeah, quite possibly. I don't know, it's, um, I think Tilt needs to just reassess, play his meat and potatoes game, mm -hmm. forget about the reactors, sorry, not the reactors, the refineries and the gas, forget about them, just um, play get some meat and potatoes. Yeah fast marines because tilt will normally do two big pushes the first at about 50 60 supply and then the second at about 200 supply okay. it sort of go running out and he'll, but yeah, to get, he'll do his first push and then try and get to 3-3 three, three. that'll be his race race after his initial push um yeah i mean he'd be very down on himself but his, his macro game is still very very good he's been doing the right things and um, he probably has thought to himself you know what I'll not step out of my comfort zone, I'll play my game. If I get beat, I get beat, but I'll play my game. And in both cases, you know, he was very... Well, in my opinion, he won the first game, but in the second game, he, uh... He, all he had to do was really hold that, and then he'd be in a, in a great position going forward. That's it. So, um, well, it's still all to play for, as you say, but, um, Tilt can, yeah, win the battle in his head, he could win the whole, um, series here. Indeed. Um, he's definitely got the skills to beat this man mm. and I think actually if, from watching these back you know he'll have learnt an awful lot of himself about about everything yeah uh, certainly. especially with, in, his, in his opinion of, of the standard player that uh, Kinder is who's no, no doubt very good but um, nobody's unbeatable he's not reinventing how to play Starcraft I don't know it's still exactly the same so we're ready for game 3 I'm good to go okay so we can help me come back here or will Kinder well, he's six, Poe. Who knows? <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Good to go. Uh, three, two, one, play. Check. Uh, and I start with Kane there in the top right. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the green still. It's Green's always been an unlucky colour, I was told. What, for what, in Zerg in particular, or just right. in life? Just in life. Cars, never buy a green <laughs> car. Really? Have you never heard that one? Is that an Irish thing? I think that's an Irish thing, mate. I don't think it's just a Northern Irish thing, while we're on the topic. But, uh, yeah, it's green cars, everybody crisis green cars. I've never heard that. Maybe I've um, let a shouted oh, non-green car well, line. I need to hear, no, if anybody heard. is going to back me up, or maybe I'm just crazy, uh, green cars are bad luck. We had one green car in our family, and it was always with those things. My dad got a good deal on it. And he says... Because it's fucking green. Because it's green, exactly. <laughs> and didn't he, somebody run into the side and went straight through a red light and nearly wiped him out. Uh, about six months after he bought it, so that was the last green car I've ever seen in our family. But uh, so your sample size of one car has led you to believe green cars are well, unlucky. You know, it's the national statistics <laughs> and the national statistics averages, all that kind of stuff. 
Green cars. Why did they, why did they make them? That's not even a nice color, really. Um, what about Aston Martin? What about British Racing Green? Hmm, that's not really green, though, is it? Mm, green is green. Are really dark. If yeah. I ask a three-year-old what green, what's green, they're gonna say grass. They're gonna, they're yeah, not gonna say British be... Racing Green. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I <laughs> get your point. It can't be very stylish. Uh, at the same time, so it's gonna stop this, stop the scout again. Mm -hmm. Good going. That's it. He pulls that. Yep, second SCV to um do that. Is he gonna do the annoying thing and? Make it attack a SCV. Oh, the twat. Well, hey, he is, but I mean, he's only attacking the supply depot. He's not. Um... No, it's not going to do the SCV any harm. But ah, oh, it blows my piss, and everyone knows it as well. That's yeah. the thing. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, guard expansion's gone down from uh, Kindler. He's going hats first. Rather than sitting on surprise, he'll, he'll play Mac. Oh, he's let it in. What? He's let it in. He opened his door um, to let the other SCV come out, which then did nothing. What? He's now got two SCVs sat outside. He's got three SCVs sat there doing not a lot. I can't. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> he is to, oh, I don't know. Uh, he, he, must on, he, he must be in full rage on mode at this stage. That was odd. He must have been rolling the tag or something. Uh, doesn't do the reactor trick, but he's a... Uh, the refiner trick he's not going to get out. He's going to see the second rack. So coming up, the Marine's just about to pop, and it Third will... Third rack. Those... Okay. So three. he's got one gas down, but the crucial thing on this refinery, on this one gas, is does he put... Yeah, he has put the two other units into it. Okay, so he's not going to go for sort of early, early pressure. It's going to be about a minute or so delayed. Kindler sees the fact that he's got um, his three racks there. Um, he's just about to finish his spawning pool. And he's got one gas. Is he just going to go up to 100 and then pull his drones out of it? the next thing to look for. He's got his overlord in a nice position there, just it is uh, natural to see what's happening. The uh... <laughs> <laughs> killers. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> and it's so handy for getting extra scouting information and for just messing them with your opponent. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be fair, Tilt hasn't really that problem at all. No. He's still just macroed away and just got making sure he's not getting supply blocked and building marines and getting tech labs and getting reactors and doing all those things so I mean that's it I don't know for my money um I've been I've been um, doing my as you describe it my long drawn cheese in my last game I've been practicing that quite a bit I find getting a reactor in anything under the 10 minute mark you're kind of stunting yourself a you, whole lot it doesn't pay for itself until the later game that's the one thing day nine always says unless you really committing to it or really need it they it will not pay for itself in the early game for early pressure. Just build another another racks, that's it. It's the time lost in making the reactor <laughs> that makes the thing really painful, especially early game. To be fair though, it's four reactors, or four barracks with one reactor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he hasn't done it with everything. Yeah. He hasn't stunted at all. But no, here we go, he's, um, go for he's a taking push. a picture out of my book and he's going to yeah, take a run. It looks like his um, reactor is back. I don't no, I'm just trying to see his barracks ah, on. Uh, so he's got the... Yeah, the um, the Zalnaga, so he sees it coming. Mm. He didn't see it from his overlord, but he'd see it coming. So what's his? He's got four Zerglings. He's got a spine crawler there. He's got a two Bainlings and four Zerglings. Ah oh, no, he, he, should, he should be okay. But there's a bunker coming with it, and that's what the the push will be. They're slow as. Oh, is the speed finished for these Zerglings? Can he get around the back? Yeah. Ooh, there's the beams. First one, no damage, nearly. Second, so no damage. Take no damage. That's good, so... Can they back off here? There's only four marines, but that's all he needs. He needs to get in. Oh, there's more from the bane lanes. Kindler's playing it well, to be fair. Um, Can he split? No, he hadn't got stiff. They're all gonna go down this way. Oh, the bunker. bunker, no, never happened. So we're speeding no his way. Um, a pretty decent little push, so there's still marines and he's he's trying to pull them back. Uh, he hasn't managed to get them all, but um, there's three going across okay, the map. So that's not the worst, I mean... Um, well, what he's yeah, done, he's forced up. Taylor to make units. He's forced him to not drone and to make mm -hmm. units. So as you see now, he's got speed, he's got overlords. 
He's got and he supply blocked himself as well. Supply minute, block. so, so and he's no speed on his brain. So you know, meanwhile, we've got an expansion going down for tilt. We've got a bank bunker at his front, just to try and cope with some early pressure if he decides to come the other way with him. But I think, you know, Kinder will be thinking, you know, he's, I wonder what else he has. What's he doing behind it? He went for a push there. He been doing anything behind it. So he's decided to send a couple of slow zerglings across the map just to see. That the excellent choice. Um, it really is good. It the information is invaluable because you can tell exactly when they go on their second base, their third base, their fourth mm -hmm. base. You just know exactly when. I mean, and for the cost of pretty much nil minerals. Twenty-five minerals. That's exactly it. So he's just going to leave it, just sitting at the expansion, just to see when that happens. He needs no timing because as long as Tilt is in one base, he doesn't know what's going to happen on him. But he knows he'll run out of money sooner or later. So That's if it. he sticks in one base for another while, he knows to just keep macroing up. If he comes out and tries to expand here, he know that he's committed 400 minerals into a command center here, mm -hmm. and he know well he can't have that much stuff. So here we go. Command center is finished. He's thrown down another tech lab. So he's two tech labs and reactor he'll have to go with all these marines. Um, and he's got the bunker filled. So not doing anything with that second command center at the moment. Yeah. Though. He's even morph it into a yeah. There yeah, goes. There we go. Now morph it to the um, the mule out of it. <laughs> is he gonna go concussive shell? Was he gonna go? Is he gonna get some marauders out? I don't see why I put the second tech lab down there. Stim was already complete, it was. and um, it was combat shield was just completed as well. So yeah. um, why why the tech lab? Unless he's going marauder, um, there's no need for it really. Indeed. He never really seems to go marauders. I feel like it's a bit. No, I love him. They are, they are great. Um, just the amount of health, just the amount of uh, HP they have as well. Just keep on going, especially with one like a couple of medivacs with them, and that's it. They're just the tanks. It's funny that we'll mention about uh, Tilt sitting in this one base because um, Ken has decided to throw down spore crawlers. Uh, just because he's he knows that he's sitting in one base. You gotta be he's specties now banshees, that kind of stuff. Even a medivac drop at his back door. We're expecting he's got the spine crawler at the back door as well, just to get by him a bit of time if that comes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this tech lab still sitting there doing that one. Going to move down here to plant the rubber command. That's it, he needs to get out and uh, do something I suggest though. He yeah. needs to make himself out. It's funny, I, if I was Tilt, I know the ill-fated mech play last time, uh -huh. he wouldn't have to commit it. A couple of Hellions would just give him a wee bit of map control and make him build units. Um, and, do, and do that kind of thing, so... You know, he's done a good job in forcing him to build an awful lot of arguments. and to be perfectly honest, Kaelin has trapped a wee bit here himself. He has not taken a third base. He's worried about what his opponent's doing. He hasn't got great vision of what he's doing. He knows there's an expansion down. He can see that there's a bunker getting built. Um, but he doesn't know a great deal about what Tilt's doing. And he's frozen a wee bit. He's only getting his expansion up now. It's their base and you know. it's getting that spire up as well. So. Hmm. It's he's going to pop a whole lot of meters here because he is building up quite a bit of gas and they pop about uh, 10 meters here at once. But if Tilt can get in here and disrupt them again, many facts would be a much. Uh, they're coming. That's not now. Oh, I can see them coming. I drop into, into the back door because he hasn't done a very good job spreading this creep here. He could just start picking off overlords. They're sitting everywhere, and he could just start messing with uh, with Kinler in that regard. I That's think Fear showed that was so effective against uh, Kinler. He managed to do it. Mm -hmm. That's it at the moment. He's uh, got some long distance mining at the moment for his uh, before his third gets set yeah, out. But no, I mean the marine push comes out. Um, but till okay, he's getting a siege tank, he's getting the marines, but still. He's not, he's building them seven at a time, but he's not really making himself out. I mean, they're both keeping the money low, but then if if you're on race to 200, the Zerg will win. Indeed. Indeed. So, I, I mean, mean, pretty even food. Uh, tilts slightly ahead in, in, um, in some, well, he was certainly, up to two minutes ago, was slightly ahead in his, in his upgrades. But um, now, uh, Kindler's starting to 
Michael 2-1. He's doing a really good job of his creep spread. He's really determined to take care of this. Uh, this we got a drop coming into the third. Medivac drop. It's there. It's ready. Yeah. So this is one drone. So we get the five drone. Six drone. So here comes Six, everything. Seven, seven so drone. they're gonna go down. Six, seven, back up. Oh, again. Yeah. And, but he's made him reveal the mutas here now. So mm. that was. Let's see if I go to the units lost. You know. Kills lost a bit more, but again, done enough, I think, to keep Kaneler on his toes here and say, you know, I'm not just sitting here doing nothing. I've got units, I've got medivac play here. You've got a couple of meters, but that, you've got quite a wide spread to cover here. Hmm. Mm, interesting. Pathogen clan's coming for, um, for Kaneler. That's it. Now the reaction from Till also, um, he's got a bulk load of SUVs just there, tapped in the, um, Supply depot. He's still um, building, yeah, several missile silos as well, just to try and mm -hmm. counteract the the mutas. I said the mutas. He's got. I've never seen. Still I've never seen Kindler play in faster. This is quite interesting. Mm. I, um, hmm. I don't see any coming out, but he is getting the uh, the upgrade for them for the, the the better energy, starting energy. So this will be interesting. The Zergling push is coming across the middle here, though. That's quite a scary push in many, many ways. Tilts. I see it's got the three fully laden bunkers up front. Um, not entirely blocking the way off, however. But well, it's, I mean, it's okay. A couple of uh, that tank ever besieged on high ground. He obviously hasn't got siege tech, otherwise he'd be in. But uh, yeah. no, no, siege tech has completed. It's got a jump for the bingham bar. So that just goes down. Yeah. So a good bingham bar. Nice to get him. Yeah. Really he shot the front door, that's quite nice. Not bad, he's, he's good, yeah. It's good. He's losing an awful lot of SCVs, but here come the reinforcements from the back. If he can just Love pull it. the SCVs a little bit. Onto the news, onto the news. Ah, oh, really. So the he's melted away. Uh, he just came to, I mean... Could have went better in pulling his SCVs, but aside from that, not bad. Kindler's still got a big mass of units at home. Still very much favourite, but uh, if he can get a SUV over to finish this command centre, uh -huh. you know, get that third base up, get turn it into an orbital, get your mules down. He yeah, was just a good job of getting his mules down. I'm always very impressed by that. Uh, and transfer some of these SUVs down. You know, he might be sitting too bad. He's he's quite a bit down. He's 22 out there, drones down on Kindler. He's going for mm. a little push along the back here. Sniper overlord. Is there a push coming across? Kindler thought about it. Uh, he's just going to cover for the drop if it comes in. But now he's got 15 meters as well, yeah. which is a uh, <laughs> really scary number. Yeah, so he hasn't Especially done anything with... Um, Oh, here comes a little engagement. No matter if it's been split. Yeah. Oh, dear me. That's pretty scary. But they have met three bit three Medivacs here. Ah, why are they going back? No, never go back. <laughs> the uh, command center is finished, unfortunately. Yeah. This is gonna be not long now, I don't think. Uh, there's just too many units, the economy just got too strong for Kaler. A well timed game, we must be fair. That's true. He's just, just getting down, building up the uh, extra command center. He's got these meters that are, well they're not not to be fair, they're pretty, pretty weak, but they've got such a critical mass. SCVs. We're down to 18 SCVs. There's 40 difference in SCVs. Uh, it's not looking great just on the general supply either. It's uh, 48 to 136 at the minute. It's, uh, yeah. We can just see the map as well. I mean, it's just like the entire half of his map and slightly more. Uh, Ken has just decided that not he's going to go for creep spread in this, this map and that's exactly what his game's going to be. So mm -hmm. he's got a scary army. Scary amount of minerals. And, uh, yeah, that too. He's got 5k. Yep. 
just it's so hard to stop a Zerg sometimes from just getting the most the crazy amount of money. Well, that's it. So, I mean, um, from the outlook of this game, I don't think we'll be spoiling much here by saying Kmore's probably going to win this. <laughs> um, but, I mean, how did this happen? Let's sort of try and do a post-mortem on this game. And how did this happen? How did it How did it go wrong for Tilt? How did uh, Kmore sort of get so far ahead so quickly? Well, in many regards, it was going very well. The initial push was not bad from, from Tilt. What he probably needed to do at that stage was... Um, then, his expansion at the end, so that he, his economy could be on a par with uh, with Kindlers, and then try and try and delay and getting the meters out to give himself map control, because that's really where this this whole uh, game changed. As soon as the meters came out, the map control was was pretty much Kindlers then, and he could do what he, what he wanted with it. You know, we, mm. the, the opportunity for drop that was taken away. Um, it couldn't be any of these nice things that he was doing with earlier on. You know, he's so effective in, in, uh, in his turn. He can get the critical mass meters. And he's just got to stop the critical mass meters. And there's the GG. And that is that. So it was a 3 0. But not really mm. a three 0 in many regards. Could have gone certainly a lot different. Um, in particular in, in game one, if um, Tilt had taken everything they just say, like as base, he would have taken it. And uh, but yeah, and in game two, um, he held the the roaches as well. And then, as you say, um, Kingle's uh, particular sort of attack there was pretty much null in as well. So he would have stumped himself. And uh, in the third game, it seemed it was the the sort of like the best example of Kingle just um, overwhelming. Tilt. Mm -hmm. So, but um, the, the first two games were, weren't half as convincing for me. No, certainly not. I mean, uh, like I keep on saying, he effectively lost the first game, kind of. Mm. Um, uh, and the second game, it was pretty much an all-in. Um, so, I mean, those two games could have went so so differently. And then, the other thing that would have happened then is the confidence would have been down for Kinder. He would have maybe tried to do things slightly outside his what you would say his comfort zone was, uh, and he mightn't have been as confident to just go muddling and do the play basic simple game that he that he had for most of the time. That's it. Um, yeah, I mean, as we said, uh, no one is unbeatable in this tournament. Um, but it just seems till yeah, his own worst I mean, he was himself um, in this, and he convinced himself he was behind when he really wasn't. And um, that's it. He could have done. A fair few things a lot better, but the main thing was I don't know. Again, scouting, I'd suggest, and just trying to get a better idea of exactly what, um, yeah, what Kenwell had. Even sort of like denying their scouting by he had um, in the first and third game. He all, well, he had to start out already, but although late in the first game, mm -hmm. but he could have got those um, like just straight up okay. medivacs. Yeah, get out a couple of um, not ravens. I've been a twat. What are they Vikings. called? You know. Vikings. Vikings would be really effective. I think Fear showed that to deny Canada that scouting. Just take out the odd overlord, especially the early game. You can go to a factory or a straw part early doors, get one two Vikings out and just take away that knowledge that he has. I think that he thought actually Tilt was going to go that third game, which is why he went for the creep spread to give him the map vision that way. He thought he mm. might go Viking, especially seeing as uh, Fear showing that was... Uh, a vulnerability of Zerg, just in general, not just a chemist play. I mean, the, those overlords are, are free sometimes when you're playing That's against it. them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think once Tilt watches these back, I think he'll quite fancy going and taking Kinder on before. I think he'll go in with renewed enthusiasm if he has to face him again. Quite possibly there is a distinct uh, possibility of that also. I mean, um, at the moment, we have um, trying to I think what we have at the table is that was a semi final. Kenwell does go through to the final. Final, indeed. Uh, Tilt drops down the loser's bracket where he will play the. Well, he'll play against me, against you, I think. It's, it's pretty obvious that's what's <laughs> going to happen. Uh, we still have an awful lot of games to play to get anywhere near that, but uh, uh, blind optimism tells me that it'll be me against you. Um, what's that? <laughs> it'll and be then, well, whoever, of the sort. <laughs> if it's us uh, and whoever gets through, um, I mean, we have both, uh, both lost a tilt earlier in the tournament as well. We have indeed. Payback's a bitch. Yeah. Grudge match. That's it. I've... 
That's it. I think we've, we've both grown a lot over this tournament. Um, well, we'll have the other thing. We'll be battling many of the things that, that Tilt battled in this game as well. I mean, he's mm. playing against somebody that he that he considers to be have the beating of him. Certainly after mm. the first two games and the way the way the games that he he thinks the way they went, um, or the perception that you get when you play and you you think God oh, that person's just better than me. When in actual fact, maybe not the case. So look at these back. Mm. You know, we'll we'll be battling many of those things if we have to play against Tilt, um, in much the same way as he has here. That's it. I think it's yeah. It's uh, certainly a lot to look forward to. Um, so I think yeah, um, we have the users bracket to continue playing. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not to break the full full, but I believe straight after we streaming here, I'm going to play Advain. Mm -hmm. Also, he uh, texted me while I was uh, we're playing there, and he's come online. Right. And so yes, um, that sort that came out, and then um, we've got the other sort of arm of the bracket, which involves you, Divern, and Fear. Indeed. And then, um, yes, after you sort out that triangle, we can uh, get on plate, <laughs> get and, then that's, and then the winner can go through to the final with Kano to see who will be crowned the Scrubsville Cadaver Scrub League Tournament 2012. With all the great prizes that we've got put together. <sighs> trophy? Interview I think we queen. get a trophy. Would anybody want the trophy? <laughs> I was going to interview with a queen, <laughs> but not necessarily the queen. A very secret uh, prize, yeah. <laughs> Swimming lessons with uh, tilt. Um, what else can we? <laughs> <laughs> that's a um, yeah, a pep talk from Uncle Ant Man. Uncle Ant Man, yes, indeed. Yep. Uh, and uh, I, well, might get one of your your family photographs with all the Chinese family and all that kind of stuff. So that's it. <laughs> yeah, all forty thousand of them. And then uh, I, I'll take it. a picture of uh, my hometown in Southern Ireland. And, uh, yeah. No green cars, funnily enough. <laughs> With no green cars we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think that is a thing, you know. Oh my god, if somebody please back me up. If it's just, even if it's just Irish population agreeing with me. It might be just green like a, a small hamlet right around where I live that green cars are taboo. <laughs> that was a, it. Was <laughs> All I need is one person to make a case. That's it, one. That was it. back in 1912. Roe McFergal crashed the very first green car and since then they've been cursed <laughs> in the area. Do you know him too, eh? Um. <laughs> Good fella. Uh, yeah. But no, I think that will do us for today, or we will continue to ramble, and then we'll have to call it a podcast. So, Indeed. Um, yes, this has been the semi-final of Tilt vs. Kane Law. Kane Law takes it 3-0 to progress to the final, and Tilt goes down to the loser's bracket Indeed. to fate uh, one of the very capable players coming up through there. So, um, yet many more games to be coming. We will have a wee bit of a delay before the final, in which we will... Um, hopefully try and live stream it and then hopefully get everyone from the tournament back in so we can have a bit of a dick around at the end and uh, yeah have a few fun times in. Dicking around. that's it the old dicking around so yes uh, thank you very much for watching I've been one of your hosts Ant-Man saying goodbye and also from Mr. Bohan goodbye from me as well lovely <laughs>